Live science says of Darwinian evolution. It can turn dinosaurs into birds, apes into humans, and amphibious mammals into whales. What Darwin showed in his work on evolution and natural selection is that we don't need to invoke any supernatural force or power to account for the development of life through time on Earth. The ongoing processes that, that are observable in today's world. A scientific method is based on the collection of data through observation and experimentation. Science Daily. We can trace the evolution through the fossil record. Could you be specific? Just give me one. Um, uh, between six and seven million years ago. Hundreds of thousands to millions of years? Evolution is, is not testable over time. We are condemned to live only for a few decades, and that's too slow, too small a time scale to see evolution going on. Richard Dawkins. We see nothing of these slow changes in progress until the hand of time has marked the lapse of ages. Charles Darwin. You've got the canine kind, the coyote, and the domestic dog, and there's the feline kind, which is the cat, the tiger and the kitten, and you've got humankind. So Darwin said there'd be a change of kinds over many years, so could you give me one example of observable ex evidence of a change of kinds? So for instance, the fossil record shows the common ancestors of all carnivores, that cats and dogs were once linked, once united by a common ancestor. How long ago? Uh, this, I believe, was like 60 million years the ago. The scientific method is, must be observable and repeatable. So could you give me one piece of observable evidence for Darwinian evolution? Okay, I would point to, as one great example is, look at the genetics of the stickleback. What's that? Uh, so stickleback fish are a very interesting collection of species that were recently isolated after the end of the Ice Age. What have they become? They're, they're various species of sticklebacks. They stayed as fish? Well, of Could you give me an example of Darwinian evolution, not adaptation or speciation, but a change of kinds? <laughs> These are changes of kinds. They're These, still fish. They're distinctly different fish. We have thousands of examples. Can, me, can you give me one? I can give you, I can give you thousands. Just, Just one. For instance, I would say uh, look at Lenski's experiments with bacteria then. So what do the bacteria become? The bacteria are still bacteria, of course. So that's not Darwinian evolution. That's not a change of kinds, is it? It, it is a change. It is a change in the genetic makeup of the bacteria, which but is still bacteria. So what do the bacteria become? Uh, a new kind of bacteria. So it's still bacteria. There's no change of kinds. To summarize, the observable evidence that you give me for Darwinian evolution is bacteria becoming bacteria. No, it is bacteria acquiring new metabolic capabilities. You said before that there, are, there is lots of evidence for evolution. I just want one observable evidence for Darwinian evolution, yeah, no, just one. But I gave you some, you don't want... Not some, I want one. Wait, you don't want that. I want one. Said, that's yes, I do, I'm pleading no, with you people. Said, you asked me to tell you, you asked me to tell you when I've watched one species evolve into another, isn't that right? No, one kind into another. There's 14, is it 14 different definitions of species? So I want a change of kind. When you're talking about kinds or change in families, you're, you're actually talking about, about macro evolution. You're talking about um, uh, changes on the level of, that separate, say, cats from dogs. So could you give me any examples of Darwinian evolution? Well, uh, when you say examples of that, then you have to sort of look at over a longer time. When you say change of kinds, you mean the evolution of one species from another or to another. Yes, we have that in action, actually, in the Galapagos. Could you give me one instance? Yes. We have an example from a group of birds called Darwin's finches. What the finches become? They become genetically new and anatomically new, recognizably different species. So they're still finches? Well, of course they're still finches, yes. So there's no change of kind.